Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I wanted to cover the 4.4.2 beta release of Krita. Some exciting things to check out. Let's get to it. Okay, so once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. If this is your first time joining in, thank you so much for being here. I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make good use of them, and also to build a community of learning so that we can make each other stronger with our own experiences and well-rounded perspectives of how we use things. So thank you so much for joining in. Krita 4.4.2. I know I've done a kind of a series of videos on Krita, but that's because there's just so much going on with Krita right now. It's very exciting. So I do have other things on the agenda for future videos on other tools and projects. So join in as that comes in. But uh, there's just so much going on with Critter. I wanted to make sure we covered this today because it's so cool. So I'm going to jump into the workspace and let's see. This is Krita. This is a beta release. I will put a link to download it in the description below if you're curious to try it out. Um, knowing that, again, this is a development beta release and there might be a few quirks with it. But um, that aside, I haven't really found any serious trouble with it apart from, um, you know, normal use and things. So um, seems good so far. <laughs> so I wanted to look at two specific things to highlight in this tool. They talked about mesh gradients and then they talked about mesh manipulation. And it's really cool and they cover almost like a pseudo 3D aspect. This is a really cool direction to see Krita going into. It actually also supports the SVG. I think it's the two template now. Um, you can export SVG. There's some really neat stuff there coming on. So go look at the release notes again. That'll be in the description below. But I'm going to cover these specific two features uh, just so you can know about them and try them out. Um, they were very difficult to discover, which is why I'm focusing on just these two. There are other features um, coming along. Um, but these two are really, really uh, valuable and uh, have a lot of potential and they were really difficult to trace out. So I'm doing this for your benefit. All right, so I'm gonna start in Krita. I have a new drawing started here. I'm gonna add a new vector layer because this really applies to vectors. That's what we're working on here. I'm just gonna make a shape to start, in this case a circle. And I'll point out that you do have some basic manipulation controls already because it's a vector and you may be familiar with this where you can somewhat adjust how this is going to look or get shaped because it maintains the math behind it. So that's a vector in case you're not familiar with that concept. It maintains uh, the properties of the shape in almost like a raw format so you can manipulate uh, the, the shapes and things further. So starting with a vector circle, well, we most of a circle now. What I'm going to show you first are the is the gradient, the mesh gradient. All right, and to do that, what you have to do is use the shape selector tool here up here, the arrow, and you have to select it if it's not already selected. And then under the tool options, you want to use this paint bucket, and it's this kind of checkerboard option here, which wasn't very clear. Okay that flips into the mesh gradient mode. Now, I noticed in the beta here, if you try it out, it may not show the options. And if that happens, all you have to do is click off, change the tool, change it back, reselect, come back over and click the button. And that's consistently done it. If it didn't pick up the, the panel the first time, that's always done it you know, to show me these options. So having said that, let's drill in here. So this stop is actually, uh, the color and that pertains to the uh, the point you're going to select but we'll get back to that in a second rows so we're actually going to draw out a grid that we can use to apply gradient color so i've just made a three by three grid you can see that changing in front of me and now we can look at this stop option i'm going to select a point here and I'm going to say, well, I want this to take on the color of maybe this blue. And you can change all these, by the way. I'm just choosing from the palette. And you can even change the um, uh, the translation of color. Or, you know, th there's a lot of play. You can actually change the style of palette here if you want to really uh, change this to your liking. There's options. That's, that's the point I'm driving at. <laughs> so I'm going to pick blue as this point. Okay, you can already see it's applying the gradient to that. I can choose this point, and again, I can set that to a completely different color, 
And I could do this for as many points as there are. Just keep adding in variants if I really wanted to. So you can get the idea behind that. Now, what we can do is we can ap apply some dimensionality to these by clicking these other points. And that actually changes how these gradients interact with my vector, with my shape. And I can also move these points by themselves as well. We really have a lot of control over what we're doing with these ranges and these fields of gradient. It's a really interesting idea how you could apply washes of color over an object. And I'm thinking like big scale illustration now where you could apply this over something that maybe has multifaceted gradients that need to behave differently. You could do that all in this same tool now, which is really awesome. So do that. Um, I'll note that if you decide later to change the grid, you can, but it will reset it. So be aware of that. Try to kind of forethink that out a little bit um, or duplicate it and make a new one and then, or snapshot. Do one of those two things before you, uh, before you change that. Just know that it will reset as you change the grid. So that is the mesh gradient, okay? And now I wanna take this a different way and look at mesh manipulation. Again, a vector tool, but really, really cool because you can bend it around uh, perspective. <laughs> so you may be familiar already a little bit with Krita's ability to, to do perspective with other uh, rasterized layers, and now you can do it with a, a vector a, in a mesh sense. You can actually apply kind of pseudo 3D perspective. So we use the uh, transform tool and our tool options again. What we would do is we need to change the mode up here to this new mesh. And similar to how the mesh gradient works, we also need to build out a grid, okay? So same concept at play here, I'm gonna build a three by three grid, and then I can now take what I have in front of me and we can bend this around something. This is just super cool because in addition to controlling the color, we can now control perspective of this. And you could warp this around an object if you had an object that had contour, if you had water, if you needed to simulate something that needed to be more fluid, this is it. You can do it all with this tool, which is really awesome. These kind of mesh enhancements that, that get you over that hump of having to do multi-step uh, processes to, to, to do it. it, it's all here. <laughs> so that was just really amazing to see. And the best part of all this is that it maintains it as a vector object. So you can really still play with the overall sizing of this without sacrificing quality if you need to make overall adjustments because it'll recalculate the, the bit values. It'll do it for you. So that's just so cool. If I were to take this now and, and increase the size again, it will mathematically recalculate and factor in the pixels that are needed to make that what it should be because it's it's based on a vector. So these are just such amazing enhancements. I, I really encourage you to go play with them because there's amazing potential here. There was one other feature enhancement, again, pertaining to vectors, I believe. Check out the release notes. Um, the rest of them were kind of bug fixes. It makes some blurbs about how there's some things that are being in develop, you know, being created. It talks about new animation pieces. I know we've done a lot of animation in the last few videos. That's coming in what they say will be Krita 5. That's kind of exciting to hear about, right? But um, again, go check it out, download this, play with it. And I hope you're excited with me because th these are just such amazing innovations and they're so much fun to try out and dream and, and see, wow, this could really shortcut and improve how I draw and how I do things. So. Thank you for watching with that, and thank you for sticking with me this far. Uh, again, this has been Photo Luringism. I'm Nate. If this was helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the really exciting things that we're going to get to. I promise we've got some amazing things coming down in the future, especially as we jump into 2021. Consider leaving a comment because, as I mentioned earlier on the video, this is a community of learning, and the comments are not just for me, they're for everyone because I we're working together as a community of learners to make each other stronger. So don't hesitate to leave a comment, ask a question, and get involved. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I'll see you at the next video.